Howdy. I made it to uh, Milton. Milton, Pennsylvania. Parked behind some uh, double drop guy from Ontario. XL trailer. And this is like a weird truck stop, you know, falling apart. But one thing they do have, they have lots of parking on the second level. So you can park here, you know, with a Jeep, with a Stinger. And speaking about the Stinger, remember I mentioned how I was afraid it would um, still be acting on me? And it was acting a little bit. Basically what I found is that when I do a turn, right, I do a turn, let's say left turn, and then the rear axle does not return 100% to the straight direction it still points slightly in the same direction where the turn turn was right so if i was turning left so it goes like this a little bit and it stays like that and then i go over a couple of bumps especially on the road it bumps and it straightens you know and i reduce the pressure like the pressure as you see one two three four five six that's very low pressure and everything is good over here you know but that's what it was doing and so i took my um you know all those grease sprays i have right and so i decided to spray in here i use a little uh, straw so i i put some fluid film in there and here and then here here but i i didn't have a gun like there's two grease points in here and then there's grease points where over here and over there but uh, you see it looks fresh is because as i was going through through uh, Dansville, like i love that ta it's never busy pretty much each time i show up there there's maybe there's one truck inside but they have two bays and this time i was driving i saw this right so that um, I was positive this was happening because of the, you know, I just remembered that, yeah, I'm afraid some mosquitoes can get in because you see this area, I'm pretty sure there's lots of mosquitoes in here. And so I just remembered that, you know, I remember um, the last heavy load I had was, uh, it was like end of November or, or beginning of December when I moved that big uh, part of uh, boring machine from uh, Wisconsin it was heavy so I used the Jeep I used the stinger and then when I came back I dropped the I drop uh, the Jeep and I still use the stinger for probably for a month just because I didn't want to dismantle this and then finally I, I took it off and it was sitting in the snow there for like I don't know three four months till I finally got a load again where I needed the stinger and so that's what happened so I was greasing the truck and trailer like every 20,000 kilometers uh, 15,000 miles but I forgot about the stinger you know and I think that's why it's been acting up because there's some some rust uh, formed uh, between those plates or maybe just not enough grease inside right and so I stopped in Dansville I thought I give it a give it a shot if they don't have any trucks inside because I have to load tomorrow in uh, New Jersey and from here it's still two hours and so I couldn't stay there too long but I, I, I got some fuel in there and I got deaf before at uh, where at uh, Husky in uh, Niagara on the lake and I see both bays are open there's nobody inside so I ask them I say hey can you guys uh, grease my trailer and they said sure 17 bucks just go around and go into the first bay towards the parking lot and so i did that and i told the guy i said i don't need the truck even though i should have greased the truck as well but so i i showed the guy where the grease points were i said mostly i'm concerned about the neck see all these grease nipples right and then over here and he said this one he said one of these 
no in the back he says they didn't take grease and there's grease in here you see so now everything, now everything is greased perfect and in there you see like that big thing in as well what about this side yeah and this side see so the guy was pretty good and then i said yeah in the back well i already showed you right so where the pivot is inside and then there's um a couple of other points uh where that frame goes up and down and while he was working on it i say hey uh, do you mind if i go grab coffee go across the street to the auto pot store i wanted to see if they have uh there's grease guns you know and the mechanic said yeah sure go ahead and he said if they don't have it go uh go a little bit further to the uh, tractor what is it called tractor supply he says they might if these guys don't have it then tractor supply shop will definitely have a uh, tractor supply store and so i went to the first to the first one right across the street from uh, from uh, TA and these guys had uh, like a four different makes and models starting from 18 bucks to 40 bucks and I was talking to a friend of mine and he says if you have a choice get the one that you can operate with one hand and you see this is pistola paragrasse corampinado right there so anyway so pistol grip right it's all in, in in spanish i'm guessing aluminum grease gun and you see it says shows you a little picture of the truck and a tractor so it's all good it's high quality performance aluminum die cast uh, and so you you load this and the guy says yeah this is the best one he says because it, it leaves uh less uh less mess right so so next time I don't have to pay 17 bucks, you know, because I'm mostly concerned about this, about the, those uh, points on the neck, grease points, and on the stinger. You know, I, I, under the axles over there, under the trailer, I can stop by whenever they have a pit, they can do that. But these, from now on, I'll be greasing them more often, you know. I haven't opened it yet, but that's what it looks like, right? So it, it has this handle in here air bleeder valve zinc plated pistol grip and the brand looks to be pt performance tool and it comes with lifetime warranty so this was i think it was like 28 30 bucks right so i just wanted to show you this and one more thing i wanted to mention is that so yeah tomorrow i'm loading uh, uh another drill rig it's uh 40 42 metric tons but i know it's like 92,000 pounds okay and it's gonna be a bit tall but only like nine feet six inches and it's gonna be long so it's gonna have that boom you know and why that's why i i decided to bring the stinger because uh it's gonna put a lot of weight on the back you know and uh those places over there are very are very uh lots of narrow streets and so this thing it will allow me to maneuver e easier around tight corners but once you have the stinger you cannot just have a short neck in here because the stinger pushes the weight this way so in order to be to have kind of like a balance of weights on the track and on the trailer you need a long neck Maybe not this long, but I didn't want to pay again to somebody to put the shorter neck. You know, the 36 inch, that one might work, but nobody gave me a hard time. So I drove, what, like six hours to here. I'm probably, what, uh, 400, 300 miles away from Canada now. And somebody said this will be fun. Somebody, one guy got totally confused by so many parts on my trailer and one comment was Sergey, would you mind just go over the parts of your trailer because i'm totally confused what is the stinger what is the booster and why you have why you need to have all these things <laughs> so anyway people from europe i usually europe you know uh, france over there where they don't have to apply 
they don't have to go by the bridge formula they're always very con confused by what we use here in the states and canada but over here they go by bridge formula right bridge formula where they did experiments and they found out that the more space you have between axles the less impact the uh, tractor trailer has on the bridge and that's why they give you more weight well not in these not like new york pa you know new jersey you can still get lots of weight even without the spreader bar right just four axles you know quad but other places many other states uh you need this you need either three plus one or two plus two so they want you to have more space between axles you know otherwise you cannot they won't give you the weight like i think kansas gives you like sixty-five thousand pounds on a quad as soon as you add this spreader bar to make a stinger the same four axles but now they give you 60 plus 20 you know so anyway that's your 60 ton trailer right it's about 7,000 pounds heavier than my previous 55 ton and you can easily increase the capacity of your trailer all you need to do just remove this plastic and go to a custom shop and just ask them to write Fontaine 65 class and then you just snap it in here and right away you can get 5,000 pounds more I'm kidding I'm kidding okay it's a 60 ton trailer so this one can take 120,000 pounds in 12 feet of of the deck there you see 60 tons in 12 feet even with the long neck three plus one two plus two quad try them even a tandem the deck is super strong 16 12 okay and so that's just the neck right this is the neck and then if you want to use the jeep you need this the flip they call it flip box flip box or neck extension right so uh, i still want to try to install you know i gave up the idea of buying a extra deck just too much money and they want they want me to refinance the entire contract which would add two more years i don't want to do that so i just gave up on that idea i'm going to keep this till it's paid off in november 23 so november 23 i will only have a truck payment and a jeep payment but this one that's one thing i want to modify is i want to try to install hydraulics in here so that i can drop the trailer and then i can uh, maybe park the truck next to here and flip it down because then uh, you know because of course this is not good there's too much space you know when i park in my parking lot i take too much space it's hard for people to go around me and they make a u-turn so especially for parking i want to be shorter so flip box or neck extension and i have two of those so this is 83 inches which i normally use i need that for the jeep right otherwise the jeep will not fit in here and why you need the jeep again because most lows you need more axles like anything over hundred thousand pounds i will take the jeep and you need the space you cannot just have five axles in a row here you need a space again because of the bridge formula they wanted to space out the axles right and that's why you need this uh, so of course then this sits on the jeep and the jeep hooks up to the to the truck and the jeep is just like a dolly like a small trailer with two axles or, or one axle right i mine is a tandem jeep so it's a looks like a mini trailer right with the two axles which adds capacity and allows me to uh, move heavier loads right and then we have the deck so that's your hydraulics right this this drops down this which of course i cannot do now but when i have a short neck so this goes in here and supports the neck so i can drag it away disconnect right and that's your lock that's the lock when you drop it you have to unhook that in order to take the neck away and this is the height right so i have five positions here so once i start my hydraulics i can raise it slightly to get this from that uh, hole and then i can use this handle to choose one of five so this will be the lowest from the ground and the five at the bottom there will be the tallest so when i need to go over a railroad track or something you see 
now I'm position two, I think. Yeah, I see you can there. Position two. So if I go to five, it'll be here. So if I need to go over a hump on the road or or um, railroad track, I do that, right? So so the chains are there. Short chains, first compartment, long chain. So six feet, six foot long, ten foot long. This way it's easy to remember. Shorter chains are closer to the truck, longer chains are closer to the rear of the trailer. I need these boards when I have something something wide, right? I put those boards in here on these outriggers and I can move a heavy lo uh, a wide load. And I use this for an excavator bucket, which is uh, I put in here. Right, and this way I can I can fold the, the bucket and the stick and achieve uh, low low uh, overall height. And by the way, one guy was asking me, like a friend of mine was asking me, he says, how far are your outriggers? I mean, cross members. And you see, that's why that big machine I did last time, that's why it broke the boards because you see like over here, right, there's nothing. Like that's your cross member, right? And that's what the the wood sits on. Underneath here, there's nothing, you know? So if you have a, a very narrow tire, you know, and it goes in here, just for one board, of course it'll break it because you see this, some trailers, see, I'm pretty sure this is probably two feet. Like my shoe is size 12, so maybe a bit more. See, some trailers, if you want to make them stronger, you space these closer, you know, maybe 20 inches or maybe 16, or maybe some people go crazy and go like one foot, but of course that adds weight, but then the trailer becomes much stronger. Uh, but you know, now I know that I'll be just careful. Maybe next time if somebody offers me a load like that, I'll have to say no, because then it's just a nuisance to replace all these boards, you know? And also you can, it can cause an accident. You know, and you see here, it started bending this, but it didn't break it. You know? So that was a very dangerous load. Okay, so this trail, of course, is modular. Modular means that once you unhook these uh, bolts and you raise the trailer from that like it sits inside like a little you know receptacle there i can unhook this and that's the beauty of this that i can change decks i can change decks i can use shims right so shims uh, increase the angle so if you have a super heavy load you want to put a bigger shim to you know increase the height so when you have that heavy load like 120,000, it will not push it too much to the ground but now I'm using a medium shim. And to change them, you just need to, you know, cut these bolts probably. Because last time I had to change them, we had to cut them, right? And so the actual trailer, my trailer is tandem, right? So my trailer is a tandem trailer. And these trailers actually are more expensive than a Trident trailer because this gives you more, more, um, yeah, I definitely have to change this tire. Check this out, wow. It didn't look this bad in in Cambridge, but the guy had the only the guy only had two tires for me, right? Heck, yeah. When I come back, I definitely am changing this one. Um, and so yeah, this all these are flip axles, right? So this is a flip axle. What? Check this out. That's interesting. It got unhooked and I lost what did I lose I lost the well there was no pin so now what I gotta do is I gotta drop the the air and go find the pin I got a bunch of these pins 
See, that's why it's always good to turn them. Make sure they're turned. Okay, what about the bottom one? The bottom one is good. I see, good thing I noticed. <laughs> and I have to cover these. Because these are brand new. So far the weather is good, but... Oh, wait. Check this out. <laughs> Unbelievable. So they just fell just fell out interesting I didn't even lose the, the pin yeah sometimes when you empty this happens right so I see like that one is is uh... so now I just need to put this in but of course I, I'll have to play with the suspension to put this in so anyway so this is a tandem trailer right modular so again you see I can hook up this one flip axle make it a trident and then i can take that one off hook it up in here make it a quad or this this is called a spreader bar right spreader bar again why you need this because uh, in a lot of states they will give you more weight if you have space so instead of a quad you have three you have in, instead of uh, four axles in a row you have three plus one or even three plus two right so that's your stinger but this is called a spreader bar so the stinger or booster is this whole thing which includes the spreader bar and one axle and you see it's all on it's all on pins so once you uh, once you uh, take all these pins out and disconnect all these hoses you can just take it away and then take this one out and hook back to make it a quad you know like if i was uh if i wanted to pay somebody because i'm going to you know like like i said new jersey pa new york illinois indiana you don't need this you don't need the spreader bar but i took it because i didn't want to pay again you know for the uh to take it to take this apart And so, and plus, like I said, it uh, lots of narrow streets in there, and the trailer with this is much easier to to maneuver around the tight corners. So, And that's it. So that was a quick, quick uh, run around the, the trailer, right? Why you need why you need all these components so like i said mostly it's because we are we have to go by the rules of uh, of the bridge formula so 10 axles in a row do not work in here so you have to have them spaced out and that's the jeep and the stinger right and the added benefit of the stinger is that it's steerable so i know in europe they have you know multi-axle steerable trailers but again that's great but here you won't be able to get enough weight on those axles because they're so close together like my stinger so it adds about 14 feet one inch it adds 14 feet one inch uh, to the length of the trailer and uh, there's only one or two states where they really want 14 one most uh, states are okay with 10 one so you know kind of like on a flatbed 
on a flatbed trailer you have 10 foot one inch spacing they give you 20,000 per axle so the same here so if, if I was buying this again I would not buy a 14 foot one spreader I would buy a 10 foot one spreader so this way you pretty much don't lose anything unless you go to that one state I forget I think it's either Kansas or something again one of those crazy states where they don't like giving people too much weight I, I very rarely go there anyway so a 10 foot one would mean that I'm four feet shorter like now if I hook up a Jeep I'm hotter than seven feet long bumper to bumper and some places you need a, you need a uh, pilot car because of the length right um, and so if I had a shorter spreader bar I wouldn't be one of seven I would be one of three right and that's always good so the shorter you are the better if you can still get the weight so that's the trick here so you don't want to be too long you don't want to be too heavy and that's one one complaint I have about this 60 ton trailers right is that it added 7,000 pounds of my empty weight when after I switched from 55 ton to the to this one but the advantage is that this is a very strong trailer it's much stronger than my 55 ton like everything is massive you know the 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 steel is thicker wider um, I'm not complaining you know yeah it's heavy but what do you expect it's it's a heavy duty trailer and so hopefully yeah now my my uh, my rear axle should not stick as much as before because now it's greased and like I said now I have the grease gun so I can I can grease all these points maybe even you know in before each trip if I have a heavy load I can go and just grease uh, especially the neck and the rear uh, the spreader bar you know so so that's it that's all for today so tomorrow I'll do a video about the um, about the drill rig I ordered the permit for for uh, New Jersey like load unseen but I don't want to order PA on New York unless I double check the dimensions because I don't trust the broker, I don't trust the shipper. I got to see it with my own eyes and then I'm going to order, order the, the rest. Because this goes to a, a job site in Toronto. So I'll be definitely going kind of like back towards Buffalo. Buffalo, New York and cross uh, in, uh, to Canada via uh, Peace Bridge and so once i'm loaded i'll have to order the pa permit the new york permit the delaware D delaware uh, bridge authority permit to cross the delaware D delaware dam and then i have to order uh, the permit uh, or get the green light from the peace bridge because you have to do that tlp truckload program online where you fill in you know your weights your spacings and then tell you if it's okay or not okay and then once you're at the bridge you have to pay it's uh what is it like hundred dollars us if you cross before noon if you cross after lunchtime after 12 p.m it's 200 dollars. but quite often I end, I end up there after lunchtime because it takes time especially when they send you on these crazy hills it takes time to to get to the bridge so so that's what's happening all right thanks for watching take care